This is lesson number 72, Algebra 1, factors that are sums and pyramids and cones. All right, sometimes when we have um, an expression, like what I have right here, um, if you'll notice here, the thing that we have that is common to each one of these terms is an a plus b. We have an a plus b here, here, and here. And notice that they're all in parentheses. That shows you that they're grouped together. If they weren't in parentheses together, this wouldn't work. But since they're common to all three, we can factor out that group. We can pull that out, and we're left with this, this, and this. And that's what I've got here. Okay, and once we do that, then we can take that and continue factoring. So the a plus b gets drug along, and we break this into two binomials. Two numbers multiplied give us 6, and take the difference between them, and we get 1. So the only factors of 6 are 1 and 6, which doesn't give you 1 when you take the difference, or 3 and 2. Biggest one is negative. And this one here would have to be positive because we wanted it so that the positive times the negative gives me a negative here. And there's my answer right there. Okay, so let's keep going here, see if I can get rid of that. I can. All right, we have x plus y. And that's times x squared plus 9 x times x plus y. This is the second example. Okay. Exact same thing. Factor out our x plus y. And we're left with an x squared plus 9x plus 20. Two numbers multiplied together give me 20, added give me 9, and that's going to end up being a 5 and a 4. 5 and 4 is 9, 5 times 4 is 20, and because all the signs are positive, they're both going to be positive, and don't forget to bring this part and put that on your, on your answer as well. Alright, let's do one more, and then we'll get into our pyramids and cones and all that stuff. All right, the third example they give is m, and then they give us an x plus 1, x squared, plus 7mx times the quantity, x minus 1, plus that. All right, so again, we take out the x minus 1. And we're left with an mx squared okay but you notice we still have an m here so let's factor out that m as well so that m is going to be factored out completely different Okay, and we're going to look at just that. Let's see, two numbers multiply, give me 10, add it, give me 7. And I get that, and I'm done. Okay, in this section, pyramids and cones, we're pretty much going to focus on this kind of a pyramid right here and kind of ignore that one but I wanted to show you both of them just so you could see the comparison between them and this is just a bunch of vocabulary I would write this down so you know what we're talking about for each one of these uh, pyramids so this five figured um, or five sided base is obviously called the base and it's a pentagon this here the area of this is called the face. The top is the vertex. The lateral edge is the corner. So this corner right there is the lateral edge. So where two lateral faces meet. 
we've got what's called the axis and the altitude and that isn't always the same you can notice over here our axis goes from the center of the base up to the vertex center of the base up to the vertex the altitude is how high it is and when they say altitude they're talking about how high it is from using a right angle to make that determination. See they did that here. We've got a right angle here. So the altitude and the axis are the same in a right pyramid. So again this is the one we're going to be sticking with. Alright let's keep looking at some more of these. Let's get that one out of the way and we'll bring this one into here. Alright notice this one is called a regular pyramid it looks just like the other one and it's regular because each of these sides are the same and a pyramid is classified by the shape of its base alright so this pyramid that I have up there is called a um, pentagonal pyramid right here because the base is a pyramid or is a pentagon and notice over here we have a triangular pyramid a square pyramid because it's got a square this one has a rectangle sides are not all the same but and it's called rectangular and this one is all called a pentagonal okay let's see if we can move this up more okay Dealing with cones, a cone is like a pyramid, except the base is not always a, a perfect circle. Sometimes it's an oval, but in, the, in these cases we're going to just use circles. And it has you know, the same idea as far as the base is con or the um, altitude and axis. The altitude is the height at a 90 degree angle and the vertex okay you can see that lateral surface is the distance around now the difference between a lateral surface of a cone and the lateral lateral surface of a pyramid is now let's see if I can get my pyramid back up here okay lateral surface of a cone is is um, or a pyramid is you add up all of these sides and you have all the lateral surfaces and then you've got you know your side over here and then your back so in this one you have one two three four five sides you find the area at each of the sides add them all up and that will give you the lateral surface whereas a cone doesn't have sides it's round all the way around so what you have to do is unroll it and measure the lateral uh, surface area so it's a little bit more tricky and we'll get to that how to do that later all right let's move this one out get rid of that okay notice the uh, cone has what is called a slant height it's the distance from the base to the top, how long it is, and notice it's different than the altitude. The altitude is the straight up and down at a right angle. Okay, so it makes a triangle. The slant height and the altitude is going to make a triangle. In fact, it's going to make a right triangle. Okay, well, let's find some information out about cones and all of this stuff. Alright, let me get this back. Yeah, I'm going to need that one. I'm not going to need that one. Alright, so let's look at this triangle right there and it gives us some information. It gives us the uh, altitude right here being 8. Gives you the length of that side and the length of that side. Okay, so the volume how much water this pyramid would hold, if you want to look at it that way, is going to be one third, one third the area of the base, 
times the height. So one third the area of the base, and I probably, let me go ahead and make this as area of the base times the height. And that is the uh, volume. So let's look at this one that we have right here. The area of the base here is going to be this times that, right? Length times width. So one third area of the base is going to be 63. And how tall is it? 8 inches. Okay. So what I'm going to end up doing is multiplying all those together and getting 168. So remember, you multiply these two and then divide by 3. And that will give you your 168. Alright, let's look at the next one down. It has to do with cone. And they give you the altitude and they just give you a radius there because remember the uh, area of a circle is uh, pi r squared so we're going to take pi we're going to square that and there's my area of my circle then I multiply it by the height that's all okay and then it says take a third of it. So we take the area of the base, multiply it by the height, and take a third of it. So what we're going to do is um, take 36 divided by 3, which is going to be 12 and then multiply that by 8. So 36 divided by 3 is 12. 12 times 8 is 96 pi. Then we're going to multiply 96 times pi and that gives me 301.44 inches squared. So don't forget to put that on there. I guess it should be feet, shouldn't it? This here says feet, so don't forget to put your ending on there. That's that's important for you to do that. All right, so that's the volume. And this next part we're going to look at is uh, going to be the surface area, and we'll do that on the second video.